Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about a pretty easy mistake to make in Python involving the LRU cache decorator, which I've done a video on, I believe. Uh, LRU, LRU cache. Yep. So check out this video. I will link that in the description. Uh, but there is a pretty big pitfall with LRU cache that I'm going to show you about today and why you should avoid it. And I'm also going to show you a recipe on how you can still use LRU cache and avoid this problem. And the problem that we're talking about today is using LRU cache on methods. So I'm going to make a very short example that shows you the problem, and then we're going to show you how to fix it. So I'm going to make some sort of class. And uh, let's say it has some sort of compute function, which, I don't know, it takes in a value and returns some other value. And maybe this is expensive. Uh, maybe well, we'll simulate it being expensive by putting time.sleep1 in here. And um, I don't know, computing. That way we know <laughs> we know it's expensive. Actually, life is short, we're gonna use half a second. Uh, and maybe this, I don't know, just returns the square of this or whatever. And uh, you might imagine that you want to make this function faster. Let's actually make this slightly more interesting so there's state that's involved, so it's actually important that we are working with our uh, actual self instance here. Um, y int um, self.y equals y. Maybe it returns self.y. Otherwise, it's not really an interesting example. Okay, so this function is expensive, and if we were to run this, uh, and we do c ten dot compute four. She gets one sixty. No, two fifty six. Wait. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four to the four. <laughs> I meant to do four times four. There we go. That would have been one sixty. Okay. C ten dot compute four. I thought I was losing my mind. There we go. One sixty. Uh, but you'll notice every time we run this, this is kind of slow, and we can optimize this. We could uh, cache this value because we know that. Its input uh, with this with this class is always going to give us that same output, and so uh, what we can do here is use LRU cache. But this is the thing you don't want to do. So <laughs> import func tools, and we can either do func tools dot LRU cache. Uh, so we just did max size equals none. Uh, you could also do this with func tools dot cache if you're in Python three point nine and above. Is that Python 3.10 or is it 3.8? This is 3.9. Okay, so if you're in 3.9 and above, you can just use functools.cache, which is the same as doing this. Um, but let's say that we're in 3.8 or whatever and doing this. So you might imagine uh, you could cache the function by setting this LRU cache here. And now when we run this, only the first time we run this, um, let's see, c equals this, uh, and then do c.compute. Four, uh, you'll see that it computed it there, but now it returns it immediately. Um, so that that might be something that you would want to do. Uh, you'll you'll notice that I did something subtle here. I assigned this before calling compute, uh, and that's actually going to point out the first problem with this is it probably doesn't actually work the way you expect it to. Uh, we should expect like for each new instance of this that it maybe it would redo the same thing, uh, but we're actually getting a different self each time, which is causing this function to be cached differently. But that's not the problem here. The problem here is even worse than that. Uh, the problem is this decorator is actually keeping all of these class instances around forever, basically forever. Well, actually forever, because we have max size equals none. And we can show that a little bit better by putting a little thing here. And usually you don't use destructors in, in Python or Dell callbacks in Python, uh, but I'm using it here just to show a point. Um, generally you don't do this though. Uh, but, we're gonna have it print when it deletes itself here. So if we go back to this and we do C10, um, and then oh, we actually have to do another expression here. Wait, why didn't that work? Why didn't it get deleted at all? Wait, what? <laughs> C equals C10, and then do C equals none. C equals none. Okay, yeah, so now it's getting deleted. So now you can see when, when it gets deleted. I'm not actually sure why it didn't get deleted here. Oh, I know why it didn't get deleted, because it got assigned to the underscore variable. So if we do C10, doesn't get deleted. Underscore refers to this, so it's still alive there. Um, but if we do you know, 2 plus 2, now underscore got reassigned to 4, and it deleted it because the garbage collector. Anyway, so now we have a way to see when the when the thing gets deleted. And you'll notice if we do c10 uh, dot f4, um, or compute 4, actually let's just assign it, that way we 
have an instance and we can do this more directly. If we do compute four here, uh, you'll notice that we get our result here. And let's say that C got deleted somehow by assigning it done. You would expect it to have gotten garbage collected there because that's what we saw when we did that right here. We got a garbage collection here. But this LRD cache actually kept that alive. And if we look at uh, C dot compute dot, I think it's or C, C dot compute dot cache info, you'll see that it has a current size of one. It has kept that cache around. And the key of that cache is actually these two arguments rather than just our input argument here, um, because this is how it this is how it looks at the values in there. And so we still have an item in there. And actually, if we do cache clear here, uh, you'll see that it now frees up that object. And so this that instance uh, that we constructed here would have actually lived on until the end of the process or until it got evicted from the cache. Uh, but since our max size is none, it never would have gotten evicted. It would have just stayed in there forever. Um, and the reason for that is, it uh, goes back to my original video about decorators, uh, this one here, way back when, this is a really old video. Um, decorators are just kind of a syntax sugar for calling a function. What this actually looks like is uh, the same as doing compute equals, um, why did I paste that? <laughs> Functools.lru cache max size equals none, and then calling that with the compute function. So this is basically just an assignment inside the class body. And any assignment in the class body is basically just a global variable. It is not bound to the instance itself, and so it lives on beyond the lifetime of the particular instances of the class there. Now, there is a trick that we can use to kind of fix this, uh, and that is to change the cache to be per instance rather than globally. And I've actually used this a few times. Uh, my text editor actually uses this to keep the uh, highlighting cache around. So this is only the the highlighting cache is only kept per file that's open rather than keeping it globally for the process because you know you might open multiple files and uh, the syntax highlighting for one file isn't probably going to be helpful for the syntax highlighting of another file but anyway uh what you tend to do is move this uh compute to like a compute uncached function uncached like this and we can actually assign a uh, compute function directly in our instance initialization. And we can do it similarly to what I showed before, functools.lru cache, max size equals none. But in this case, we're gonna use the compute uncached function here. Um, and so that's gonna give us a compute method that has a cache, so it's only going to recompute per instance, uh, at, you know, once, once per inputs, because we have an unbounded cache here. Uh, but it's not going to cause this object to stick around for forever. So if we do this now, do c equals c10, and if we do c.compute4, you'll see that it still does this, but now it's cached. We're no longer seeing it redo that same instance as before. And if we assign c to none, um, and it's cyclical, so we actually have to cause the uh, garbage collector to uh, run again. Uh, there's a there's a cycle in here. So there's still a cycle, so you still have to trigger a second layer of, of garbage collection, and this will get triggered naturally, so it will eventually collect this object normally. But um, even with GC collect before, this never would have gotten collected because our, our LRU cache would have uh, kept a hold on it. But you can see here, we got a deletion. So this allows the objects to eventually be freeable. Now, the other thing that you might want to do instead is, you know, refactor your code so it doesn't have this problem. Uh, you know, take your uh, complex computation methods and move them out to be dependent specifically on their inputs. So in this case, like, make the function on this y integer and this x integer rather than the instance that contains this y integer. That would be one way to, to fix this cache and not have a, not have a dependence on, on this actual class itself. Now, the other thing that I showed before, which is a little bit harder to solve, which is that each instance gets its own cache, and that's still true here. So if we do c10 dot compute four, uh, you'll see that we still are going to continually recompute here. And you would actually have to change your approach to how you uh, structure this class instead. And I don't know, there's a, there's a couple ways you can do this. One of these would be to make an object pool such that each call to c10 would give you the same instance back, and you would do some and magic with double under new and uh, you know return a previously constructed value and just have immutable objects and I don't know it gets it gets complex from there but there's there's a few ideas for that I'm not going to implement them here maybe I'll make another video on that in the future 
Uh, but anyway, wanted to show you why uh, you don't want to use LRU cache on methods and some of the memory leaks and problems that it can cause. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, I actually did a video on a bug in PyTest, which was caused by this, or a fix. Anyway, it's related to this. I'll link that in the description as well. Uh, but thank you for watching. If you have additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.